So a little while ago, I actually had a conversation with uh, two people, Anya Kane and Kevin Greenlee. They're a husband and wife team. They co-host a podcast called The Murder Sheet, and they are in this case super deep. Uh, journalist and attorney, they have helped to uncover a lot of details, generate some serious leads in the case. They also got their hands on the leaked photos, the crime scene photos that created a big hullabaloo. And, well, I talked with them earlier today. Anya, that was such a, a surprise um, in, the, in the hearing today. I don't know that anyone really expected it. I don't know if you expected it, but do we think that what happened today was because of the photo leak um, that, that you were part of? You, the photos were leaked to you. Yes. I think to start off with, we definitely think what happened today occurred due to the leak and that these were some of the repercussions or aftershocks of said leak. And as for whether we were surprised, I think we both thought that there was a pretty decent likelihood that the defense attorneys might be removed from the case, that that could be a consequence of the leak. But I don't think either of us expected that they would be withdrawing themselves. And I'm so fascinated about the photos uh, themselves, and I'm going to get to that in a moment. But, Kevin, first to the to the process and, and how this happened. Like, First and foremost, uh, this was a, a gagged case. There are plenty of pieces of evidence that we're not supposed to know anything about. And yet, through a bizarre chain, the pictures came into your possession, you and Anya's possession. How did that happen? Uh, we were contacted by a source that we talked to before, and he sent us these images. And after we talked about it with him, he was pretty shaken about it. He was a little bit stunned that he had these. This is a father. He didn't know what to do. And as we talked about it and the gravity of the situation hit him, he said that we really should do the right thing, which to his mind was to go to law enforcement and give them full information about exactly where he got these images. And then were you able to tell law enforcement where your source got his or her hands on uh, on the photos? Yes, our source provided us with screenshots of his interactions with the person who had given him the photos, and that revealed quite a lot. We reviewed it, and he basically gave that to us on the condition that we would take it to law enforcement. So when we reviewed it, um, looking through it ourselves, we realized that um, there was essentially a middleman between our source and the original leaker, and that the original leaker was a member, uh, a former employee of uh, attorney Andy Baldwin's uh, law firm and a close personal friend of Andy Baldwin. So that was where we sort of pieced together what had happened. And why I pieced together that I figured today happened because of, of that. I mean, with that direct sort of chain link uh, all the way back to the defense attorney, it made me wonder, well, what's this defense attorney going to say in court uh, about that? So, Kevin, I know all responsible news organizations have to really measure the journalism versus um, the impact on a process. And clearly you both have decided that the murder sheet wasn't going to put those photos out there. Kudos to you. Um, we're not going to either. And I don't know how far, Kevin, you're prepared to go to describe what it was you saw. What, what can you tell us about those pictures that you saw uh, that were leaked from the case? I think they, they were crime scene photos and they were graphic. They were disturbing. And just looking at them, it was obvious that they were authentic. And uh, beyond that, I say just leave it to the imagination. They were very disturbing images. I'll press only slightly here, um, and that is, were the, were the children's bodies in those photos um, all or part, part thereof? Um, I think we're going to probably decline to speak more on it, just out of respect for the families. Um, but I can tell you, I, I wish I hadn't seen these images. No one should see them except for the jury, ultimately, the experts, and the defense and prosecution. These were images that were never meant to be shared, um, especially before a trial. They are incendiary. Kevin, can you um, extrapolate from what you saw? Do you think it may have been an effort 
uh, on behalf of the defense or someone who supports the defense, might not have been the law office, do you think it might have been an effort to promulgate this theory that, um, that you know, arose fairly recently, that it, this was the Odinistic cult, ritualistic sacrifice of children, et cetera, et cetera? Do you think this was an effort to poison the jury, um, that that, in fact, was their theory? Uh, I'll certainly answer that. But before I do, I want to stress that we have not seen nor are we aware of any evidence that directly ties attorney Andrew Baldwin to this leak. As far as we know, it was just his friend who was responsible for this. But certainly from the text communications and the screenshots we saw of the communication of the middleman with our source, it seems a pretty clear that his motivation for sharing these images was he thought it would be helpful to the defense, that he believed that what was in these images would somehow support their theory of the case. Well, listen, I can't thank uh, both of you enough for coming on the program and giving some clarity to this very unusual bombshell today. Um, Anya Kane, Kevin Greenlee, your podcast is The Murder Sheet. Uh, it's, it's great listening. Thanks, thanks to you both for doing this. Thanks for having thank us. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.